Uh, and so we're going to explore the topic of algorithmic composition in this module. In this introductory video, we'll talk about uh, what an algorithm is, uh, what algorithmic composition is, uh, and look at an early uh, historical example. So uh, most of you are probably familiar with what an algorithm is, but, but just in case not, uh, an algorithm is essentially a, a set of steps that uh, you follow to get something done. Uh, this can be done by a human or it can be done by a, a computer. Uh, and there's a lot of uh, popular uh, representations of algorithms that we're all familiar with. Uh, uh, things like flowcharts, uh, where you might start with a, a particular step uh, and then uh, uh, go on. And there might be a, a conditional where you would branch in different directions, uh, depending on what the answer to a question might be. And you go on and on following these steps uh, as directed by the, 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 the flow in the chart. Uh, another popular incarnation is a, a recipe. So it gives you steps about uh, what to do, do this, do this, do this, do this. Uh, uh, to make a, a particular uh, dish of food. Uh, now when we take algorithms and, uh, and turn them into the musical uh, arena, we start talking about algorithmic composition. Uh, so we're essentially writing an algorithm. Uh, uh, it might be, again, something that's done by a human, uh, or it might be something that's done uh, by a computer, uh, but we're, we're specifying a specific process or set of steps to follow uh, to create music. Uh, and this is very different uh, from how a, a composers typically work to create music and, and how we've been working in this course uh, thus far to create music because uh, we're no longer uh, writing individual notes or events uh, uh, and saying, you know, uh, on measure one, uh, beat three, there is a C or something like that or this sound file is playing back. Uh, rather, we're defining a process which then creates all of those notes or events uh, in a piece of music. Uh, so it's a much uh, uh, more abstract process. It's, it's moving kind of a step up the hierarchy of, uh, of not making these note-by-note these -note decisions anymore, uh, but rather uh, creating this process which then kind of spins out these notes or events in the piece. Uh, and I should also mention that uh, uh, a lot of times algorithmic uh, and more traditional compositional techniques uh, can mix in the same piece. Uh, and, uh, and the border between these is, is not as clear as it might seem. You could also think about writing an algorithm that generates a, a, a single uh, section of music or a, a track or something like that. Uh, and then bringing that in with other musical elements that are, are uh, composed with, via a traditional kind of note or event-based paradigm. So uh, it's not always a decision of one versus the other, but there's a, uh, there's a clear opportunity to combine uh, both of these approaches. So why, why would we want to turn to algorithms in the first place? Uh, there's a lot of different reasons uh, that musicians have turned to algorithmic composition. I want to uh, cover just a, a, a few that are, in my mind, uh, some of the most important here. Uh, one is to automate repetitive tasks. The, the same reason that we might create a, a macro in a spreadsheet uh, uh, or something like that. We, we, we see that there's something that we're doing over and over and over again that, that's incredibly tedious to do uh, by hand. So if we, can, if we can code this in an algorithm on the computer, uh, then we can, uh, uh, we can take some of that busy work uh, out of our hands and we can, uh, uh, we can let the computer take care of those, those details for us and, and, and that repetition. Uh, so, so this is simply a, a kind of time-saving mechanism. Uh, but it's actually more than just a time-saving mechanism because when we, uh, when we express this as an algorithm, when, when we express it as code, uh, we have the, the ability to uh, rapidly experiment with a lot of different alternatives. Uh, so uh, you may have an algorithm that generates a, a thousand different events in, 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 your, uh, in your piece of music. Um, and it, it would be, uh, it's incredibly time-consuming to, to place those a thousand sounds or, or MIDI notes or whatever onto uh, your DAW uh, multi-track timeline, uh, one by one by one. If, I, if I'm able to abstract that into an algorithm, uh, and then I want to ask a bunch of what if questions. What would happen if I substituted out this sound file for this other one? Uh, what would happen if I spread this over uh, 100 measures instead of 200 measures? What would happen if I increased the density of events? Uh, what would happen if I did uh, 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 a different kind of texture with more tracks or fewer tracks, uh, uh, and so on and so forth. What if I uh, uh, swapped out one effect for another but kept the same envelope? Uh, all these questions become extremely easy to, to answer uh, with code because you might just change one uh, variable or one, uh, one function call or something like that. And then all of a sudden, you can just run the code again uh, and immediately compare uh, these different variations and, 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 and select the one that you think is most musically uh, uh, successful. Uh, another reason for using algorithms is, is to roll the dice, to use chance, uh, to make random decisions. Uh, and this uh, at first seems like a, a crazy idea that we, we, uh, 
we want the computer to, to make decisions for us uh, by, you know, by, by essentially uh, you know, uh, random mechanisms. Uh, but it's, it's a powerful way to kind of take uh, control out of our hands uh, and, uh, and kind of see what happens and see where the music might take us. Uh, and it's also a powerful way if we're making enough of these random decisions uh, to kind of organize probability distributions and arrive at, at specific results that, that represent the distributions of these numbers and, and the mappings of them. We'll get uh, into this more in, in a video on stochastic uh, uh, composition later. Uh, and another interesting uh, uh, technique is to turn anything into music, to take data from some other domain, uh, an image, a, uh, a stock market data, uh, baseball scores, whatever it might be, uh, and try to represent it in, in sound. Uh, and so algorithms are a very powerful way for us to take that kind of data uh, and turn it into uh, to music, uh, to map it onto musical parameters. So I, I want to take a moment and talk about a, a very early example of algorithmic composition with computers um, by uh, Hiller and Isaacson, uh, who are at the University of, of Illinois in Urbana-Champaign. Uh, they were working with a very early uh, a computer called the ILLIAC-1. You know, uh, just Imagine in your mind one of those giant computers that takes up a whole room, and, uh, and that's kind of the iliac. Um, it couldn't actually uh, synthesize sound or do signal processing or anything like that. Um, so instead, they used it to write a string quartet, uh, the iliac suite, uh, which was written in 1955. And so it was uh, essentially spitting out information about the notes in the composition. And they took this information uh, that came out of uh, the programs uh, that they ran on the iliac and, uh, and used it to... Uh, I was kind of transcribed it to become a, a musical score that was then played by a, a traditional string quartet. Uh, and, and the model that they generally took in, this, uh, uh, in the algorithms that they developed for this uh, was something called generate and test. So with generate and test, you generate a bunch of random data, um, and then you test it against certain rules. Um, so for instance, uh, they use different rules in, in, in different uh, movements of this, this composition. Um, but they might test it against uh, rules of voice leading. Uh, you know, uh, you can't have parallel fifths, for instance, between different uh, instruments in, in the quartet, uh, or uh, harmonic progression. Uh, whatever the rules were that they wanted to encode, um, they, they were able to uh, encode this in, in the, the test portion of the process uh, and to uh, generate the material uh, using some random decisions uh, and then basically discard the things that didn't meet the criteria uh, in the test phase. Uh, and so uh, the result actually uh, uh, will fulfill the, the, the rules that are set out by that test phase, uh, but the material will be, uh, uh, have some, uh, some degree of randomness associated with it uh, because of the generate phase. So to review what we've covered in this uh, module, uh, in this video, we've, we've talked about algorithmic composition and what it is. And we've talked about reasons for composing algorithmically. Uh, and we looked at a historical example, the Iliac Suite uh, by Hiller and Isaacson. Uh, what we're going to look at in the next video is how to take some of these ideas of algorithmic composition uh, and start to use them within the EarSketch API for, for Python.